Hello everyone, I'm Mario Destruccia. Uh, I'm happy to talk to you about the, what we did in France with opening COVID-19 vaccines data. So I work at Etalab, uh, which is, next slide please, uh, it's a department of the Interministerial Directorate for Digital Affairs of the French government. Our role is to coordinate the design and the implementation of the French state's data strategy. Etalab has been existing since 2011. Uh, one of our main roles are data opening and data circulation. The most important, I would say, which is also where I work, is the managing the open data portal data.gov.fr. We also have a team on data exploitation, which is working on data science, artificial intelligence, and overall we work on the innovation and the openness of public action. So today uh, let's start talking about a retrospective of what we did last year with COVID-19 data. First of all, why? did we decide to open COVID-19 data in 2020? Uh, it was a strong political commitment from the French president and from the French government to provide factual information to citizens, policymakers, but also it is essential for researchers, journalists, companies, and also for citizens to know, to have a transparent access to all the data about the pandemic. So what did we do in practice? We opened a lot of data on testing at a very precise geographical level, on hospitalization, intensive care, also state economic aid. We built a dashboard specifically on that, data on the contact tracing app usage, and local data on specific measures in some cities, such as free masks, commercial activities during the lockdown, and on and so forth. Uh, this led to a huge increase in traffic on our website, data.gov.fr. If you compare data between 2019 and 2020, we had three times the traffic in May 2020 compared to May of the previous year. This is due to the enormous amount of visits of people that wanted to check out the data set related to COVID-19. So this is what we did last year. And the new challenge of vaccination data uh, was not our first time so working with, with pandemic data. But it was somehow different. Uh, it was different because it's complex. Uh, we all know how complex it is to manage a vaccination campaign for the multitude of actors involved. We have health authorities, of course, the Ministry of Health, public health authority, the quasi center of COVID-19, which is sort of managing the, the entire pandemic response and the vaccination center. We have the political authorities with strong political demand. Again, the French president with a commitment towards open data. The entire government wants transparency and wants political communication in the topic. And private companies, uh, the vaccine producers such as Pfizer, Moderna, and the logistics partners that deliver vaccines, and also the partners that manage the appointments, which are booked through private companies. This leads to have lots of sources of data. Again, a closed system to keep track of vaccination. This is something that France developed between December and January, an internal system that is used at the ministry level and by health authorities to manage what's going on with the vaccination from logistics to number of cases, people vaccinated. This is closed, of course, it is not open. And I guess every country has something similar, some information system like that. We have logistics data. Again, this implies working with data sources coming from private companies that are not used to open their data and share their data at this level. And private companies for appointments, which includes, again, talking with who books the appointments, the vaccination centers throughout the entire country. So it's complex, but we managed to do something so far and today we open mostly five big data sets number of people vaccinated vaccination centers vaccine stocks deliveries and appointments let's have a look more in detail uh, what this data set contain the first one on the number of people vaccinated we all know what it means it's the number of people that have received one or two doses by sex age groups region and department this is data that comes uh, as i said before from the internal information system of the government. So there is a section of the uh, system that allows the, the government to export data on the number of people vaccinated. So it comes straight from there. It took some time to, to open it, of course, because again, the actors were not used to export CSV files for an open data use, but we managed to do it nonetheless. It's not the only thing we opened. So we also have vaccination centers. This is data with precise location, address, opening hours, and also web page and phone number of vaccination centers throughout the entire country. It is amazing for reuses, as you can just download the data set, put it on a map to have an idea of where the centers are. We have then logistics 
data. The first data set in vaccine stocks, uh, which includes the data on the type of vaccine, so again, Pfizer, Moderna, AstraZeneca, and where the stocks are, in which region, in which departments, and in which storage facility. This also takes into account the specific facilities with refrigerators at minus 80 degrees for the Pfizer vaccine. And this also entails different logistic flows as vaccine came from different producers and, of course, different delivery methods, which is why we created a data set specifically on deliveries, which can allow you not only to see the past deliveries, but also the expected future deliveries to know how many vaccines are we going to get in, for example, one month time. Last but not least, data on the number of appointments that have been booked by week, by injection, whether it's the first or the second, and at vaccination center levels. So again, we know how many people we expect to have vaccinated in the next weeks. This allows you then to have not only a look at what we have so far, but a prospective look on how the vaccination is going to develop in the following weeks. But it's not the entire thing we did, because of course we, we open data and it is our job to make data available, but we also want to make it accessible and understandable. That's why we worked on data visualization, as you've seen lots of countries did that. And uh, we are happy to have worked with the French government. First of all, the communication center of the government that developed a widget on the homepage of the French government, government.fr, with, of course, the old data on the number of cases, uh, patients in ICUs and positivity rate, but also some idea on the number of, uh, of people that have received one, both injections and the number of vaccine doses in stocks. This is just a widget on the government page. If you go deeper on the government website, you can access our dashboard. It's a dashboard that we developed last year, actually, uh, with uh, all the COVID indicators. We changed it recently. We added an indicator for the number of injections. We developed specifically two sections. The first one uh, is on the vaccination. If you can go next slide, please. Thanks. Uh, one vaccination to see the more specifically the injections and the number of appointments. This all comes from the data set that I, I told you earlier, so it's all in open data, of course. And another section more specifically on the logistics side, so you can see the number of doses that are in stock specifically for uh, care houses, hospitals, and so on and so forth. But it is not the, the entire story, because this is what we developed. Uh, what we really like to, to share with you is what other people developed. Our portal allows people to reference the reuses, what they do with open data. And we're happy to see that in just a bit more than one month time, users uh, develop more than 30 uh, applications, websites, Twitter bots, maps. This is not only unofficial, but also official. We have, for example, local authorities that want to show data specifically for the area, for the region. We have research centers that want to do epidemiological models with open data. So researchers are also using the data that's available openly on our website and private citizens that develop their own dashboards, as you can see here, some examples. Uh, some of them are maybe alternatives, uh, I wouldn't say better, but provide a different way to, to look at data than the official one. So it's happy to see we have some, uh, some alternative to the official government dashboard, and they all use the open data that's made available. So what's next? We are happy to, to have shown uh, data we opened and the data visualization. We expect to have more data. First of all, uh, the new vaccines are going are gonna to come and some of them are going to need just one dose. They require only one dose. This requires a change in how the vaccine data is, is managed, the number of doses, the number of people vaccinated. Uh, we, of course, we are working on that with the, the team that manages the information system. We hope to open soon data on pharmacovigilance, uh, which is the data on adverse reaction to vaccines. So it is transparent. Uh, that vaccines are not risky and uh, the number of adverse reactions is very low. The Agency of Safety in Medicines of France is going to, to make this data available very soon. There is an interesting research on the concentration of coronavirus in wastewaters, which allows people to see which cities, uh, the wastewaters of which cities uh, contain the most amounts of virus. Uh, this is pretty interesting. Uh, data is not yet available. Uh, you can see some uh, reuses of this data made by some researchers, but they're going to uh, give our full data soon uh, in open access. Also, we're going to hopefully open some more contact tracing data, of course, 
anonymize to see how the contact tracing strategy is working and to how the, how the government is identifying clusters. And also uh, the repository of health resources. This is a huge data set that the French uh, Ministry of Health has with the detailed data on all the hospital facilities, not only the number of beds and the number of people in ICUs, we already have that, but really on all the resources that the healthcare system has, physical resources, and they're going to put this in open data, uh, hopefully this year, we're going to, we're, we're working with them currently, and this will allow to, to have further transparency on the topic. So, uh, of course, uh, everything we did is, is a challenge and entails several sub challenges on, on many aspects. First of all, it is it was an organizational challenge to work with the multitude of actors uh, I've shown you before. Uh, first of all, when there is a, you know, a political demand for open data and the government is directly asking to some people to make the data available, you've got to do it and you've got to do it fast. The health authorities have lots of things to manage during the pandemic. They have to make sure that the vaccines roll out are going to are gonna work flawlessly. Uh, so to add also the, the burden, let's say, to, to make this data available for some people, uh, it, it's, uh, it's an issue because, of course, you might not know, not have all the all the skills you need in in the healthcare sector or in uh, in some public health uh, bodies and that's why we're happy to work with them and to share our skills our knowledge and in the end we we managed to to solve the organizational challenge and we have a, a fantastic network uh, with the with the responsible people also technical challenge why uh, we have to provide infrastructure to make this data available again some uh, well i would say all the, the involved bodies do not have an open data platform, except maybe for the Ministry of Health. Uh, you cannot pretend that vaccine producers know how to make uh, data available in an open format. And so we had to provide an infrastructure for all of them to work together, to share this data and to make it available on a portal. And of course, it's an evolving situation. So again, it can happen that one day to another, you got some new requests. For example, the appointment data or something similar. We didn't know how the appointments were going to be managed and we knew pretty last minute that it went through three private companies. So it was pretty fast for us to, to adapt to the situation. But in the end, we managed again, thanks to the network of actors. So what did we learn from this? Uh, we learned mm, two main things to, to be prepared again. Uh, this uh, is, a, is a thing that derived from the first wave of coronavirus data. What we did last year, we built a system of data collection, aggregation, and publication that allowed the actors in March and April of last year to make the data available on our portal. And we still use the same system. Of course, we, we made some improvements, uh, but it's there. So, of course, when we had to, to open the vaccines data, we didn't have to, to work much. It was already in place, so we were prepared, and that's why we managed to do it fast. We organized, again, we knew all the actors involved. We knew the Ministry of Health, we knew the Public Health uh, Agency, we knew some of the other bodies involved. So we had already a network of knowledge, a network of people, a network of contacts, and we were able pretty fast to associate every contact to the right field, to the right topic, and in the end to the right data set. So that allows us to, to follow what's going on in the data set even now. If there's a problem, we already know who to contact and we're in a great relationship with all of them. So the organizational uh, side took some months, of course, to, to work out to knew everyone, but then we, we managed. So uh, what did we learn? What did the government learn? What did the French government, the French president, learn from the entire COVID-19 pandemic? Uh, crisis management taught us to raise the salience of data in the political debate. We know that policy decisions must be backed by data. Of course, we talk about lockdowns, curfews and all the measures that have been taken uh, to, to fight the pandemic, they're all backed by data. Everyone looks at the data on our portal, on the dashboards, to see how's it going and whether the decisions are consistent with the data. And this is something that we learned in the last year, thanks to this pandemic. And the government also decided to, to engage, to do more, to take a step forward in two specific areas. First of all, on the investment side, the resources from the next generation EU will be also used to finance data-driven projects because data is a vector of economic recovery within public administrations. 
So for example, projects of data circulation through APIs, projects that use data that is already available, already open, they will be financed through the recovery plan. And there is a strong political commitment to implement a new open data policy and to make new data sets available, such as the repository of health resources I told you about, and many more that I hope that I can present to you pretty soon. Thank you, everyone.